Today, I have a compelling story I'd like to share with you. So I hope you'll join us to the end to see how the adventure unfolds. This is Forrest. He's 11 years old, the oldest of six brothers. And my name is Bracken. I'm his dad. I'm a father of six boys. We live in the beautiful mountains of Western North Carolina. Today, we're gonna to take you on a journey through the mountains, just Forrest and I. This is a special trip that we've been planning for a number of weeks. You see, Forrest would like to be baptized as a follower of Jesus. And we've decided to go out into the wilderness to take some time away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life, to slow our hearts and our minds, to look into the Word of God, to spend some quality time together, and to learn more about what it means to be a true follower of Jesus. You know, following Jesus is not an easy task. He never said that it would be easy. In fact, he promised us that it would be difficult. But he also told us that the way that leads to life is a narrow way. It's a way that is perhaps sometimes fraught with difficulty, but at the end of it all, we have a great reward. And along the way, we have a helper, Jesus Christ himself in the form of his Holy Spirit to go with us, to guide us, to teach us and to protect us. And so it's with this Holy Spirit that we go on this trip to learn more about and to grow deeper in our relationship with our Heavenly Father through His Son, Jesus. We're thankful for the opportunity to share this time together. And we trust that you'll enjoy this short glimpse into our journey with us. Our trip started out with a lot of planning and preparations. And as we planned and prepared for the trip, I had a secret for Forrest. In fact, I didn't tell him when we would be leaving or for how long we would be gone. I just told him to prepare his things and to have them ready at any moment's notice, that he might be called by me, his father, to go on this journey together. So he faithfully prepared all of his things. He poured over his equipment and his gear, making sure he had every last piece that he needed for the trip. We talked through what the trip would mean and what it could look like, but ultimately the whole thing would be a surprise. Forrest was surprised when I told him we were heading out onto the trail. We arrived at our trailhead and started walking. It was late one evening and it was a few miles before we would get to our first camp. And the whole nature of this trip really teaches us what it's like to be a disciple of Jesus. Jesus has gone to the Heavenly Father and he promises us that he will return, but he doesn't tell us when. We should always be prepared. We should always have our lamps burning and our hearts right, waiting for the return of our Savior. We had many, many beautiful moments together, just sitting, talking, reading the Word, and discussing what it was like to be a follower of Jesus. 
not just a follower in word only, not just a follower in our heads, but a follower from our hearts and with our hands and with our feet. We want the Lord to transform us from the inside out and to make us vessels fit for his use, vessels of honor that can be filled and overflown with his Holy Spirit. That the Spirit of God might flow out of us into the world around us, that he may change us from the inside and that as a result, we can be his life and his light and his love in this cold and dark world. For that is the only truth and the only reality that will set us free from the bondage and the burdens that we all carry. Yes, our life will be hard. It is fraught with challenges and difficulties. Yes, there are places to stumble along the way and we can get lost in the woods. But if we keep our hearts tuned to our Heavenly Father, if we keep our minds set on His goal for us, and if we use His compass, His guide, His word, we will always find our way. And even if by chance we do get off trail, if we do get off track, He says, Come, this way. I will show you. I will show you greater things. And it is such a joy to turn and to listen and to obey his voice and to follow him. He knows the way because he is the way. So, as we think about and face the challenges that are ahead of us. Let us keep in mind that our Father is with us and His Son Jesus has gone before us. He knows what it's like to carry a burden, the burden of the cross. So by following Him, we are walking in His holy steps unto a life that is filled with righteousness, goodness, and truth. On this trip, I gave Forrest an opportunity to share with me any questions that he might have about what it means to follow Jesus. Throughout the trip, we discussed these questions to make sure that he fully understood what it is that he is stepping into, what it is that he's committing to as a follower of Jesus as he steps forth in obedience and becomes baptized. We acknowledge that Forrest is still young and that he has many, many things to learn as he grows in the Lord. And we're excited to see what the Lord will do in and through him as he continues to surrender his life to the Lord. One of the questions that he asked me was very pure and simple, and in a way it broke my heart, but I'm glad that he asked and I'm glad that we could get to the bottom of it for his tender heart and soul. He asked this, Dad, does Jesus keep a record of our right and wrong and decide based on that whether or not we will go to heaven? This is such a simple question that we all ask. 
and that we all must answer using the Word of God. Our Heavenly Father loves us dearly and deeply in the same way that we love our own children. He does not want any of us to perish. He is a righteous and just and holy God. He is also merciful and gracious. Through the blood of His Son, we have forgiveness of sins. And when we place our trust in Him, when we allow His Holy Spirit to change us from the inside out, we will have a new life. We will become new men and women. We will have new thoughts and affections. And with this, we can trust that the Lord will keep us in His care. He does not keep a record of right and wrong against us when we walk in obedience after Him. At the same time, however, the Lord does have a standard for His followers, for His children. He expects us to love one another. He expects us to forgive one another in the same way that we expect that of our own children. There is a pruning process that goes on in our lives as followers of Jesus. If there's bad fruit in our lives, He will cut it out so that good fruit may prevail. And this can be a difficult process. It can hurt, it's painful, but it's for our own good. So as we walk with the Lord and as we trust Him, we can be assured that he will be gracious to us, and He will also refine us in the process. So as I discussed this with Forrest, his eyes lit up, and I could see that the truth of God's Word was sinking deep into his tender heart. Toward the end of the trip, we built a fire, and we took these questions that Forrest had asked as well as some of his old ways, his youthful ways, his childish ways, which we had written down, and we crumpled them up, and we burned them on a ceremonial fire. We left his old, young self in the woods, in the wilderness. I trust that these old ways have died in him, and that new ways, the ways of Christ, and new life, will be born in him as he walks after the Lord. As a father, I expect Forrest to stumble, to have difficult times. I expect there to be friction, and unfortunately, I expect there to be many mistakes that will be made along the way. But as a representative of our Heavenly Father, I will continue to love Him and care for Him. I will nurture Him. I will be His Father and I will be His brother. And I will continue to teach Him the way of the Lord, encouraging Him along the narrow path.
After many, many days and many, many miles on the trail, the last day of the trip had come. Forrest did not know that this would be his last day on the trail yet. We woke up early to the sunrise, and I had a surprise for Forrest. I have a token, a small compass that I wanted to give him, engraved with a scripture as a reminder of this trip. So after breakfast, we climbed the top of a high rock, and I gave him this token of remembrance. reminded him that I will be with him, that the Holy Spirit will guide him, that the Heavenly Father loves him, and that the blood of Jesus cleanses him from all of his sin. It was a very touching and tender moment, a moment that I will never forget. And we're glad to share that moment with you now because we want this to be an encouragement to you to raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And if you're a child, we encourage you to follow the Lord with all your heart, to honor your parents, to seek God, and give your life to Jesus. We want to walk this journey with you. There are many, many people who love and care for you and desire that you grow up to be strong and mighty in the Lord. You've been given a special gift and a purpose for the kingdom of God. Your life is truly meaningful to the Father, and you can have true freedom as you surrender your life to Him. So at the end of the trail, I surprised Forrest and told him we were going home. He was very excited. We finally had made it, and now as a result, I can see a change in Forrest's heart, in his action, in his attitude. I truly believe that he is a changed young man and that he has many, many years of serving the Lord ahead of him. Four days, three nights, and ten miles done. So join us in praising the Lord together for this young soul that has come into the kingdom of heaven. And we pray a blessing over you and your family as you seek to raise your children in the same way. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. We ask these things for you in Jesus' name.